in this video I'm going to discuss the idea of the dual basis vectors so dual bases and this will introduce us to the idea of the covariant and contravariant components and so what I have up here is uh, one way we can uh, we can get the components for our vector if we are not in the uh, orthonormal basis so uh, I were off from uh, from this uh, complete perpendicular here by some degrees and you can see here are e2 and e1 these are our bases this is our vector a and so when we do the con when we get the contravariant components uh, we are going to uh, go parallel with our axes. So to get our y component, so this is the y axis and this is the x axis, to get our y component, which is this right here, we will sort of shine a light parallel to the x axis and get the shadow on the y axis here. And so this is our y component right here, which we can write. I'm going to write it as A and suggestively put that up there and uh, then actually this should be 2 shouldn't it? A2 E2 uh, so when we're doing contravariant then our component the A here will have it the 2 in the superscript where the uh, basis will have it in the subscript here and we do the same thing for the x component. We take a light, uh, shine it parallel to our y-axis, and find where the shadow of our vector falls on the x-axis here. And that gives us our a1, e1 here. That gives us our x component for this vector a. And so that is the uh, contravariant components. Over here we have the other way we can get the components and this instead of shining a light to get the y component instead of shining a light parallel to our x axis so that's x that's y we shine a light so that it's completely perpendicular to the y axis and uh, same for getting the the x axis or the x component we shine a light that's per perpendicular to the x-axis and that gives us our uh, x and y components in the uh, for the covariant components uh, and what you probably already noticed here is I have these purple axes here and I'll call this y prime and x prime and so those uh, these are our dual axes here and so what you can see is that uh, that well yeah you can see that uh, this y prime is perpendicular to our x and our x prime is perpendicular to our y and so the covariant components are actually where this uh, this line intersects on these uh, on these new axes here and you can see here I have E1 and E2 for our, uh, our dual bases here. And you can see also that they have the number in the superscript, whereas uh, for the contravariant, they're in the subscript. And so here uh, we have our, covari our covariant, uh, the covariant uh, component here which I will write as a1 now the one is in the subscript and the one is in the superscript for the basis here and the same for our y over here so uh, the y2 e2 and so that's the opposite of uh, the the scripts here that are the opposite of what we had for the contravariant over here and that's uh, that's standard for the covariant and contravariant for the superscripts or the subscripts and the superscripts on these and so what you can see here is uh, 
is that our our bases are not the same size, not necessarily the same size. Uh, if if these are orthonormal bases, if they're uh, 90 degrees from each other, then they will equal each other. Uh, but if we have uh, one of these axes going diagonal like this, then they will not be equal to each other. But you can get the dual basis, so the first dual basis would be equal to 1 divided by the uh, the other the other basis so this e1 here in brown multiplied by the cosine of this angle here between x and x prime so i called that theta 1 and so this is how you can calculate the dual basis uh, for this this x prime axis here and the same thing you can do for the other one which is e to 1 over e2 times cosine of this theta 2 right here right here so that's uh the theta 2 right there and so we can see here that uh that um our e if we have e2 uh times e2 so if we just multiply both sides by the e2 that will equal 1 over cosine of the theta 2 and the same thing will go for the e1 times e1 right there a defining characteristic of dual basis vectors though is that uh, if you multiply the dual basis by the basis that will always equal 1 and so what that means is that uh, if we are defining our basis vector up here, uh, so if we're saying that e e2 is equal to 1, uh, then what we are saying is that, that e2 uh, equals uh, 1 over cosine of, of the theta 2. And so that means oops that means that that we will have to have e2 times cosine of theta 2 equals 1 and so if if this theta 2 is is off from 90 to uh, from 90 degrees or off from 0 degrees rather uh, then then our e2 will have to become larger but if this theta 2 uh, is is equal to 0 uh, then cosine of 0 is equal to 1 and so 1 times 1 equals 1 but uh, like I said if if this theta is off from 0 degrees uh, then this will have to go up because cosine of the theta so if we had to say just like cosine of of maybe uh, maybe one half uh, this is going to be less than one and so our e2 would have to be greater than one and so uh, the reason that we call these covariant and contravariant is because if we take this y-axis here and keep uh, keep sort of moving it in towards this x-axis here so that we end up maybe with uh, axes that look more like this where the y now has a much smaller angle here uh, and we have our vector here. Um, then we can see that the components are going to keep getting smaller and smaller of this because uh, because we're going parallel to that and so these are going to keep sort of these components will keep moving in towards zero as we as we uh, sort of close these axes together but uh, so with the with the covariant we see that if we keep moving these together uh, then the 
the uh, dual basis or the dual axes are going to keep getting further and further apart. So uh, these will keep getting further and further apart and that will increase the angle between them uh, to the point where if these uh, if the y-axis here and the x-axis overlap, so if they overlap like this, uh, then we have, um, then we will have uh, a 90 degree angle uh, between, between, so this has both the y and the x on here, and we will now have a 90 degree angle, uh, a 90 degree angle so this, uh, yeah, I shouldn't have drawn this this way. So uh, I will fix this up here. I'll erase some of this here. Uh, I mean, the, the idea is still the same. I just didn't draw it correctly. Uh, and so what we will have is... Uh, so this one is should be perpendicular to the y, and this is perpendicular to the x. But the same the same holds true is that these will keep uh, moving that way to the to until if these meet together, then the, these uh, form this straight line like this. And now when we go from uh, go from this x here uh, to this x prime and from the y to this y prime uh, that f those form right angles and that's 90 degrees cosine of of uh, of 90 degrees equals zero so we see if we go back over here uh, if this cosine uh, goes towards zero if this is uh, if if we have our E1 here and cosine is going towards 90 degrees, uh, then this whole thing right here is moving towards infinity. And so this will keep getting larger and larger as you sort of squish these axes together. And that is why they're called the contravariant and covariant uh, components because they they uh, are inverse of each other where one keeps getting smaller the other keeps getting larger the the uh, bases keep getting uh, or the components in the basis keep getting smaller and the components in the dual bases keep getting larger and larger and so as you transform uh, as you transform these axes um, so what happens is uh, is that the the matrix to transform them if you're doing it in the uh, in the bases it will be the uh, inverse uh, your your uh, elements in your matrix uh, so a b c and d uh, the elements in your matrix will have to keep getting smaller and smaller uh, to for, uh, to transform the uh, the components here of your of your vector uh, so these have to keep getting smaller and smaller to transform it whereas your dual bases uh, so if we have we'll call it a prime b prime c prime d prime uh, we'll have to keep getting larger and larger uh, and so that is why this is covariant and contra variant contra variant uh, so that's uh, I mean that's kind of the way that I try and remember covariant because these will keep getting larger and larger and these will keep getting smaller and smaller uh, and so that's how I kind of remember the difference between contra variant and covariant uh, I hope this was helpful to you as well uh, let me know in the comments uh, if there was anything confusing. Maybe I can uh, make some kind of addendum to this if there's something I left out or got wrong or that wasn't clear. Uh, but I will see you in another video.